This is uh, Michael J. Coyle from Mel Temple, and I'm here with Mr. Tim King from Soil. How are you doing today, sir? Great, great. Love it here in Manchester. Hmm. Good to be back, and uh, great club. We've never played here at the Ritz before. We usually do the academies and stuff, so. Yeah, that's right. This was uh, a cool little change of pace. Hmm. Well, you know, the funny thing. I've uh, I don't think I've seen Soil since you guys supported Shine Down years ago. Oh wow, yeah, yeah, that was, and we actually had our second singer on that, and we yeah. have Ryan back now. That was, so that was 2009, 2010, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. It was. Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, but yeah, the Academy is a great place, but the uh, Ritz is fantastic for atmosphere, especially for sound as well. And um, from I, I come here a lot actually as a fan for a lot of bands uh, like Electric Wizard and everything else from that, and uh, Candle Corpse has played here as well. So it's a oh, very right on. so it's a very nice place, and also it's very roomy. I mean. Um, um, so, um, so far so good. Uh, how has the tour been so far? And um, as well, how has it been for you uh, the tour with bands like uh, Dope and uh, Cold Chamber? It's uh, it's been an absolute amazing tour so far. You know, attendance wise, and all the bands get along. You know, we've known Dope forever. In fact, I played bass for Dope to help them out with a few tours a while oh, cool. back. So they've been really good friends of ours and. Uh, Cold Chamber, we've known you know Des and Nadia for for a long, long time, and uh, the Defiled, we actually had them open for us when they just formed back. Like you're saying, the first time you saw us was with uh, Shine Down. We did off dates uh, during that tour, and the Defiled actually opened for us. So we've known those guys for a while, but it's really cool to actually you know hang out with them. We're sharing a bus with them and all that stuff as well. So, hmm. so on my own perspective as a fan of Soil, I got into you guys back when I was in high school for the uh, video uh, Halo. Oh, right on. And that was a really trippy video, I gotta say. I mean, um, I mean, I thought it was some really heavy stuff. And as I as I got more into the catalog, I started seeing that you guys have different shades to yourself, like different kinds of colors that go on from mellow to high to uh, this uh, plain now it's extreme. I mean, over the years, how do you think the band's actually been able to sustain that kind of attitude and idea? Uh, it mainly comes from you know just all the different influences we have in the bands. Uh, like I was saying, me and Adam, our guitar player, came from a death metal band called Oppressor. So we always had that uh, that heavy side to it. And then, you know, Ryan was really influenced by, like, Alice in Chains and Aerosmith and more of the, like, classic type rock stuff yeah, that, that, mean. Yeah, that him and his dad used to listen to. And me, I, I'm, besides being a huge death metal fan, I also love, like, uh, punk, like the Sex Pistols and, like, 80s, you know, type hair metal stuff like Ozzy and Motley Crue so yeah, you, you know you, I you, brought that in and you have you have Adam with his like Metallica influences yeah. and Slayer and stuff so just kind of that whole melting pot kind of gave us our sound and that's kind of why you know some songs you know maybe like a song like The One or Say You Will has that kind of like punky yeah. side to it you know and then there's other ones that have that real heaviness or you'll find some that kind of have that like Alice in Change sludge to them it's just kind of all our influences mm -hmm. blending around you know so when the band first started off, I mean, what was the uh, plain idea, the uh, architecture for this band? Was it just a, a spontaneous kind of melting pot, or was it like a plan to try and see what you could do together from all these different influences? Well, basically, uh, we had been playing death metal for a while, me, Adam, and our, and our old drummer. And, uh, you know, the scene, as you know, you have your titans of the scene, like Obituary and Cannibal the Corpse. The big four of, uh, like, you got <laughs> Mort Angel, you got Death, you've got... Uh, Deicide, Cannibal Corpse, all those, and you know those bands were, you know, were big and still are in, in their own respect. But it was That's so, right. it was so hard, and the scene was so saturated. It was just so hard to kind of get a leg up. And you know, our old band Oppressor was was successful, but we kind of got a little burnt out on the how how fast are the drums, and then black metal started coming around. That's right, and and it kind of dulled things. It kind of, you know. We just kind of, we just kind of, it just kind of wore on us. So what we did is we formed a side project just to play some more rock and stuff. Like we were kind of into like corn and you know Alice in Chains and stuff like that. So we right. we formed that just to, as an outlet so that we weren't focused on death metal 100 percent. And uh, we actually, I actually found Ryan of all places on an unsigned band CD compilation. Oh really? And it was uh, all death and black metal. <laughs> A compilation, and nice. his old band was was on it, and all of a sudden I heard his voice. I'm like, holy crap! I go, this is the guy to sing for our side project, and you know I wrote him a letter because there, there was like an address on there, so I wrote him a handwritten yeah, letter. Yeah, yeah. And uh, and he was into the stuff that we sent him and came out from. He was in Indiana, we were in Chicago, 
and uh, he came out and just started popping off the songs and we started doing some local shows and it just kept getting bigger and bigger and it, eventually it surpassed everything that we were doing with Oppressor so we kind of decided to put Oppressor on hiatus and focus on solo and it just kept growing and growing and that's pretty much what we've done ever since you know I've always wondered I mean uh, with Oppressor I mean uh, would you guys ever want to try and uh, see how uh, like a like a comeback show would go or is that like uh, something to leave behind and learn from uh, well we actually there's this uh, record label called Repulsive Echo out of uh, oh, yeah, out of that. Spain and they just reissued the our original Oppressor record Solstice of Oppression on vinyl oh, with cool. a t-shirt and a poster and the whole thing oh, nice. so it kind of got our wheels turning a little bit like yeah maybe we could write a couple more songs and just put them out digitally or yeah. put them out for free just so you know because it, it's it's odd it, it's funny because like bands like God Forbid and Shadows Fall and stuff actually were saying that they went to Oppressor shows and were influenced early on by by us and it's so crazy to see bands like that that actually you know were influenced by just our little death metal band so maybe maybe eventually uh, the older we get the the harder it is to play those type of riffs and stuff. Who knows? But, I mean, you know, uh, it would yeah. be fun. I mean, you see a lot of bands coming back out of the woodwork. I mean, they decided to still grow in strong. A bit has got inked and blood out. Yeah, and, and, and got back together. An and atheist. That, and now you've got uh, the DTA shows, which are this is fantastic. The uh, Death to All shows. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I've been to two of those so far, and there's uh, another one happening at a festival in the UK called oh, Bloodstock sweet. Festival. Oh yeah, love Bloodstock. Great yeah, festival. Yeah. I mean, uh, this year they got Dark Angel, which is actually pretty cool. Yeah, that's great. I mean, um. To this day, as a musician, what inspires you to keep on playing? I mean, besides the fans and besides everything else, what inspires you uh, to keep pushing forward? Uh, uh, I mean, we've we've done it for so long that it's you know, it's kind of like I guess in a sense all we know <laughs> these days. You yeah. know, it's just become such a part of us that it's it's kind of like you know, it, it's it's something to where when. Uh, when we don't do it, you know, we take a few months off or however long, we, we get that burn, you know, and that crave yeah. to do it again. So it's kind of, it's just become kind of a part of us. And I guess not doing it for a little bit, like when we take a few months off or something, that gives us the itch to do it again. So it's, there's really no like driving force behind it other than that it's just what we do and we enjoy doing it still and people still come out to see us do it so awesome. as long as we can keep that going you know we'll keep this going for as long as possible you that's, know? that's uh, fucking awesome uh, so on the on the road what's the strangest thing a fan has ever actually given you or has actually shown you uh, i mean we've gotten like prosthetic limbs and stuff <laughs> in fact uh, on the first show back when ryan came back in the band on the london show at electric ballroom it's actually on the DVD that we recorded from that yeah. called Reviving the Scars. A fan threw up their prosthetic leg and Ryan just took it, poured a shot of Jägermeister in it and drank out of it and then threw the leg back in. Nice. So that was uh, that was pretty good. That was pretty good. That's pretty bad. I mean, that's, that, that's strange. I mean, I've heard something similar about that. I mean, um, in Revolver magazine a couple of years ago, I was reading something by the youth and somebody had a prosthetic leg with, um, I think it was whiskey, and it had a, actually had a, a cool. Oh, it, nice. was like, it was like it was like converted into a leg firmus. <laughs> See, that's 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 something. Now like, that's cool. I mean, if, if, you, I, if I had a fake leg, that's what I'd have for sure. So I mean, uh, what's been the most exciting uh, part of this uh, this adventure of being in the band, and uh, what's also been uh, the best place you've actually played so far? I mean, the adventure itself of just going different places like Australia and seeing pretty much every nook and cranny of the United States and going to Europe and the UK and stuff, it's just been, you know, it's been a blessing for us because we've traveled the world and been able to see so many cool things in so many cool places. I mean, some highlights, I think, you know, playing the main stage at Download was actually, like, amazing in front of, like, 80,000 people where they're just, you know... All uh, you know, a sea of people singing back your songs. Yeah. Uh, the first show back with Ryan uh, in 2011 at Leopard Ballroom is a highlight. I mean, I literally had chills crawling up my spine like nostalgia from that. Thing. Yeah, and uh, I mean, we got to play Russia and walking around in Red Square. Those those were some highlights. I mean, there's so many of them, and you know, we've been a band for so long. I mean, I could stay here all night giving you you know yeah, stories and, and great mean, gigs yeah. and stuff but those are the ones that you know pop in the mind right away you know? yeah i mean that's some uh, that's some terrific stuff i mean uh, it's 
It's like reliving the uh, the beginning of the band with uh, the original with the singer back and play this, this is just Yeah, I mean, getting Ryan back, I mean, it, it felt like the band, and that's why we named the new record Hole, you know, it felt whole again. It, it, it brought the band back to the original vision that we had. And I see what you mean. Just playing next to him, I, even to this day, I still look over and see him there and I'm like, wow, it's just, it, it gives me chills because I'm, it's so good to have him back, you know. So before any show, do you have any uh, pre-show rituals, uh, or do you have anything uh, you need to have before a show? For example, like uh, food or drink, or uh... I mean, we uh, I always like I always stretch out before we play, and like the other guys have some things. You know, we'll, we'll have a couple pre-show uh, shots together. Yeah. You know, some Jaeger, and uh, Adam has this thing where he always has to take a piss. Uh, like two minutes before stage time and wash his hands oh, and it's right. just like this thing he just has to do it you yeah. know and, and uh, you know for me I always have to stretch out and you know have a shot and, and things like that and then we like a little quiet time before we go on and stuff and so when you come off the stage what's the one thing that comes and pops into your head for after uh, I mean just like on tours like this it's like you know, where's a shower if you want to take one? You know, if there's any friends of yours out at the shows, you know, where they're at, hanging out, having a couple of drinks afterwards, you know, maybe watching a movie. It's pretty much just that sort of stuff. So speaking of movies, I mean, uh, what would you say is one of your favorite movies uh, to actually watch when you're on the road? Uh, I mean, I have my, like, all-time type favorite movies. Like, I love uh, The Road Warrior, Escape from New York, The Warriors, uh, all the, uh, like, Rocky movies. And yeah. we, we all watch a lot of Star Wars and stuff. So, you know, all pretty much the classics, all the shoot 'em up cowboy type movies, there you know. There you go, I bet Clint Eastwood and all that. Yeah, exactly. There you go. And um, is there any new fans you're listening to right now that uh, you think uh, the uh, fans at home would be interested in hearing? Yeah, I mean, there's quite a few great new bands out there and although they're not quite new anymore they've got a few records out like I, I really like Black Veil Brides and Asking Alexandria uh, The Defiled who's actually out with us is a great band there's a rock band called Art of Dying which is a, a fantastic band and then uh, there's this new female fronted band called Oblivious Signal that uh, is just it, would, it definitely gives like bands like Evanescence and Lacuna Coil a run for their money. Yeah, you know. So uh, there's so there's so many great new bands out there. Those are you know a few that come to mind. And now comes the random question. I ask this to everybody. It's kind of like one of those spontaneous ones. It's like uh, say for example you're stranded on a desert island. There are a lot of two things. One item and one uh, dish of food. What would they be and why? One. What was the first one? Um, one item and uh, one dish of food. Oh. What would they be? Well, the item I definitely want a uh, like a machete with a fire starter attached to it, <laughs> and the item of food would definitely be a steak burrito. See now that you can't go wrong with steak burrito. No, and unfortunately, I mean now it's it's kind of cool because we've been coming to the UK for so long. You know, you could never find Mexican food over here, and now it's starting to pop up a little bit. Well, actually, there's a there's a food court on the road. They've got Taco Bell now. I mean, oh yeah. And uh, across the road from here, there's actually a uh, burrito bar. So oh right on. So it's cheap stuff, good stuff, and also, but but honestly, for me, it doesn't beat Chipotle. Yeah, I you know what I I'm a huge fan of Chipotle. So we, am I. I go there. There's one up the street from my house. And we have a lot of great Mexican food in Chicago, so we, we get a little spoiled when it comes to that sort of stuff. Well, we get a lot of Mexican food down in Florida, so that's the whole thing. Oh, yeah, exactly. I mean, there's one down, down the road from my dad's place, and also one like a few miles down from my aunts and uncles in St. Cloud, so. Oh, sweet. So there you go. This, uh, the great thing about that was it's pissing, pissing down heavily. And this, I'm there with a, a glass of beer and a burrito in one hand, thinking, yeah, I'm not moving. <laughs> there you go. Nice. So finally, any words for the fans at home? Yeah, thank you so much for always supporting us and sticking by us. And we've always kind of felt that Soil was a band for the people, and it's you know something that we've really taken serious as our fans over the years. And you know we love them so much. And thank you so much for letting us continue to play for you and write music and you know live our dream as well. So that's that's fucking awesome, man. So this is Michael J. Coil of Metal Temple, and thank you for listening.